we are demonstrating here the basic technique of primary total knee replacement. The extra medullary tibial alignment guide is applied. The ankle clamp or spring is applied just proximal to the malleoli. The telescopic rod runs parallel and slightly medial to the shin of the tibia and proximally it is located in the at the level of the medial third of the tibial tuberosity and it points towards the base of the second metatarsal. The extramedullary tibial rod should roughly lie at a distance of approximately one finger breadth away from the shin of the tibia proximally as is the level of uh, proximal tibial resection is decided with the help of uh, a stylus 2 mm is used on the deficient side of the tibial plateau whereas 10 mm is used on the intact side of a tibial plateau in a typical osteoarthritic knee the medial tibial plateau is the deficient one and hence 2 mm is used on that side whereas 10 mm is used for lateral tibial plateau the level of tibial resection is confirmed using C guide these these two techniques may sometimes give different levels of resection and ultimately it is the surgeon who has to decide the appropriate level the extra med the proximal tibial cutting zig is fixed in place by applying headless pins and the extra medullary tibial alignment guide is then removed the proximal tibial cut is made with the help of an oscillating saw and roughly one centimeter thickness of proximal tibia is removed the extra the tibial cutting zig is removed now a pilot hole is made at the center of the intracondylar notch. The tibial size is measured. And whenever there is a confusion, the smaller of the two sizes is selected. pilot hole is made in the center of the intracondylar notch and roughly 4 millimeters anterior to the femoral insertion of the posterior cruciate ligament for the introduction of intramedullary the zig is adjusted at appropriate valgus angle this valgus valg angle is decided preoperatively using scanograms and it is the angle between the anatomical axis and the mechanical axis of the femur as uh, we have to resect uh, the distal femur perpendicular to it, the mechanical axis the rotation is decided by the level of the posterior condyles another way is uh, by the trans epicondylar axis the posterior condylar level is marked <coughs> as is shown now the intramedullary zig and alignment device will be fixed in place
using headless pins The rotational alignment of the zig is again confirmed. The level of anterior femoral resection is checked. Too deep a resection may lead to notching of the anterior portion of the distal femur. This may predispose to prosthetic fractures later on. So once the appropriate level of anterior femoral dissection is decided, it is confirmed using the C-bar. And anterior femoral cut is now made with oscillating saw. anterior femoral cutting zig is then removed and a zig for distal cut is fixed in place and again headless pins are applied for fixing the distal femoral resection guide in place The intramedullary alignment device is now removed. And again, with an oscillating saw, we make the distal femoral cut. Again, one should remember this cut is perpendicular to the mechanical axis of the femur and this cut should not injure the insertions of the uh, collaterals on the femur So we protect the collaterals with the help of uh, Hormel. So uh, we protect the collaterals with the help of Hormel retractor when uh, the distal femoral cut is made. And it is important to ensure that the distal femoral cut is absolutely flat uh, so as to ensure appropriate placement of the prosthesis subsequently now we may have a rough guide of the extension gap as well as uh, some idea about the flexion gap 
now the sizing of the femoral component is done and the NT and the smaller of the two sizes is selected and zig is applied for uh, posterior cut and chamfer cuts posterior cut is uh, now made It is important to place the zig in 3 degrees of external rotation before making posterior cuts so as to ensure a uniform flexion gap. Now the anterior and posterior chamfer cut, posterior chamfer cuts. Again it is important to protect the collateral ligaments each time these cuts are made otherwise they may be inadvertently injured the cutting zig is again removed and zig for notch cut is applied and fixed in place using headless pins and a notch cut is marked the notch cut guide is fixed in place using head the notch cut guide is uh, fixed in place using headless pins Again with an oscillating saw the notch cut is made and the cut is usually completed with an osteotome. This cut uh, is for subsequent accommodation so the notch cut allows for accommodation of the box and cam mechanism of posterior stabilized total knee arthroplasty system notch cut is completed gentle rasping is done of the trochlear phalanges now the trial femoral component is applied and fixed in place by gentle slapping again an alignment rod uh, is introduced to check appropriate placement of the tbl component and this rod should run along the sheen of the tibia and point towards the second toe the trial tbl component is applied and the trial femoral component is also fixed using screws the position of the trial tbl component is confirmed trial tibial
TVL preparation is done as shown here firstly a drill hole is made and then keel is used for broaching of the tibia now the trial trivial insert is applied and the knee is reduced and with the trial components in place the knee is carried out through range of motion and one has to look for any imbalance in the flexion gap and extension gap and also for varicose and varus instability this completes the procedure